under the lights this evening as we get you set for another edition of Baseball on the Show. Tonight, we've got a good matchup in store between the Cleveland Indians and the Chicago White Sox. It's Baseball on the Show, and it's coming up next. Lucas Giolito, the California-born right-hander, is on the mound. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, this guy pitched really well in his last outing, only allowing one run. If he brings that kind of stuff to the ballpark, he has a chance to pitch another gem in this one. And now in the box, Cesar Hernandez. He'll get us started in this one Cleveland. under the lights. The second baseman, Cesar Hernandez. Now the first pitch. First of four here on this Monday night as the first pitch of the game is over for strike one. And guys, you take a look at the White Sox entering play here tonight. Four and two over their last six games, including a win last time out. Yeah, Maddie, we had a saying in Texas, hit or get left behind. And that's exactly what this team did in their last game. Scored a bunch of runs, but good approach at the plate. Working the ball to all gaps. Line to line. This team swung the bats well. I'm going to be looking for that again in this one. Bouncer to the left side. Moncada gloves it. Throw too late, and he's on with an infield single to open up the ball game. The mark of a great pitcher is the ability to put people away when you have two strikes on him. He wasn't able to do it to start the game. Let's see if he makes the adjustment. Into the box now, Harold Ramirez. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. Hernandez gets his lead at first nobody out good breaking ball there laid off for the second strike and there are our umpires calling balls and strikes is Mr. Earl Hendricks. Hey you know D. Rowe, the book kind of on Earl Hendricks is he likes one side of the plate or the other. Could it be where he sets up behind the catcher. It could be Dan but as a hitter that's all you look for you get I'll give you a little bit off the outside edge if you're going to be consistent with it. Now a moment here for the Indians starting lineup. Dan who do we keep an eye on. Well Matt they have to be very happy so far with the performance they're getting out of that guy in the eighth spot. He's hitting over 400. Now hold on I know it's just April but that's really impressive. And if you're hitting 400 in the back. Now meanwhile the throw to second is there and he is out trying to steal the base. Two out, nobody on. And he lays off for ball one. One and two now as that one's fouled off. Put that in the memory bank. First time he breaks out a curveball right there, and it's a pretty good one. Here comes the one two. We just saw a fastball right there. I would not be shocked if he tries to get this guy to go fishing right here and drops a little off speed pitch in the dirt. The 2 2. He's at the knees and called strike three. Indians fail to score. Indians nothing. White Sox coming to bat. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Tristan McKenzie gets the ball for the Indians in this one. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, it's hard to have all four of your pitches on, but I think if this guy can have two or three of his four pitches and have command of them, he's going to have a really good game. And the next to bat will be Tim Anderson. He'll lead things Leading off up. here in the bottom the half of the first. Not shortstop, Tim Anderson. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball called just a bit low. Fellas, we check out the tribe as they begin here tonight. They begin this series feeling pretty good about the way things have gone as they come in riding a four game winning streak. Yeah, Maddie, this is going to be an interesting watch for me. I can only think back to when you're facing an ace. The team playing well, you're confident. You go to the ballpark and you want to set the tone. 
Everybody's in the hitters meetings trying to formulate a game plan to combat what this guy's been able to do Not throughout exactly. the course of the season no so right far. Here. This should be an interesting game of cat and mouse today. A moment here from the south side to take a look at the Pale Hose starting lineup in this one. Who do you have your eye on, Dan? You know, I'm looking forward to seeing if that man hitting eighth can continue to stay hot. Yeah, eighth. I mean, this guy is a career 300 hitter. You talk about consistent. He delivers a good at bat and clutch hits basically every time he walks into the box. I love watching this guy. Adam Eaton is at the plate as he watches ball one. Bases are empty, one man out. One and one the count now. One and two now to Adam Eaton. I'm pretty surprised by the location on those last three pitches. The book on him is that he hits the way pitch pretty well, and he just saw three in a row out there. So does he go back out there again? No, Matt. I expect him to mix it up. Most catchers won't call for the same location over and over and over. Takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. That so here's good. Yuan Moncada. He's man. definitely off to Come a on. fast start in the early part of the season. Moncada. Now here's the first offering. Hit hard down the line. And this will stay inside the third base bag. A fair ball. And this one scoots all the way to the wall. And he will pull into second with a two-out double. Hey, guys, he's lucky he's getting his baseball back. He that hung that middle of the plate. The, the batter's man. eyes lit okay. up, and he was able to put good wood on you. So here's the slugging first baseman Jose Abreu now. Ball one to start the at bat. The 1 0. off the one two pitch Well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a 3-2 change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. And awfully close there on 3-2, and two, but take your base, says Earl Hendricks. It's ball four. I know one thing. He earned that free that pass good. right there. The he was tempted with it. some really good yeah, pitches, man. but he stayed disciplined and drew the walk. So now here is Herman Mercedes looking to put them ahead early with this at-bat. First offering on its way, and it's fouled away. Takes this the other way to right, and this is down for extra bases, and with two out, this might get them both home. The run comes across to score, and they jump ahead 1-0. Boy, that has to feel good as a hitter, D. Where you get that, that base hit to give your team the lead, you have to feel good when you get down to first base. Yeah, it's just a nice approach. You see him turn to his boys right there and get fired up with the dugout. 100%, not trying to do too much, able to quiet the moment down, center himself, and come through in a big spot. Here's the catcher, Yasmani Grandal. Yeah, so he'll take a look at ball one. This is exactly the situation you drew up from an offensive standpoint. Good pitcher on the mound, but you got a chance to bury him early in this one. 
The 1-0. And here's a fastball that's nowhere near the zone. It's 2-0 now. 2-0 count. Runners at the corners. You can bet he's looking for something to drive right here. There's a good chance he gets something to hit, too. Mm, much too quick on the trigger there. It's 2-1. Boy, what a time to pull the string on him. On 2-0, there's no way anyone's thinking changeup. So if you can locate it, that's pretty much unhittable. Count even at 2-2. Two and two. Hey, last two pitches back-to-back -back off speed. Then he's late on the fastball. He could pretty much do anything he wants right here on the mound. Fouled away. The 2 2 pitch. And that's ball three now as it just misses below the zone. Wow, these guys are really grinding out their at bats in this one. They're not making any outs easy to get. And that, of course, is having a huge impact on the pitch count. And that's outside. He lost him ball four. Some guys take a little time to find the zone, but with the second that's walk that's of the first inning, it might be a little more than just settling in here. Not sure how long of a leash they'll give him, but they're not going to let him walk the world out there. Now with the plate is Leori Garcia. And the White Sox looking for more here in the game's opening frame. Hoping to limit the damage, here's the pitch. Now this is driven out to deep right center. This could be trouble. Abreu scores. Two runs have scored. Now a third runner heading for the plate. The tag, and he is out at the plate as two runs score, but not the third. So three runs on three hits, no errors, and a man left. One inning in the books here, and the White Sox are out in front, three to nothing. And that'll bring in Fran Moreyes. Past history with Lucas Giolito. He's 0 for 7. He's also gone down on strikes five times. First pitch on the way. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. Love the early lead, but this game is far from over. Got to stay on top of what you're trying to do out there and execute pitches. Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. I know he's down in the count right now, and it's not looking good, but he's been swinging the bat so well lately. I don't think he minds this one bit. Lays one, off that time, and it's one and two. And he fouls this one off. Now another one two. And he struck him out. And the plate now is Eddie Rosario. And he's definitely off to a fast start in the early part of the season. Fouled off. One out, nobody on. And it's fouled away. Boy, so far early into this one, this guy's pitching really well. And I'm a big believer in body language. He's getting the ball. He's working really quick, keeping the ball down in the zone. And if you take a look at this guy so far early on, a lot of positive signs. He looks like he brought his good stuff in this one. Fouled away. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. And rarely do you see a player of his caliber fooled that badly, but he was tied up in knots that time. Two away now. I'll tell you, it's hard to get more of a confidence boost than striking out the best hitters in the lineup. Back to back to back. He's looking really sharp right now. Now that brings up Josh Naylor. And he fouls this one off. Two outs already on the K this inning, so he'll be looking to do better. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Now a fastball off the plate away, a ball and a strike. Bases are empty here with two men out. Hit back up the middle. Anderson picks it up. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. Indians go down one, two, three. 
They trail it here three to nothing. Andrew Vaughn, the next to bat. He's set to lead off the home half of the second. I'm interested to see how focused their ABs will be playing with this lead. I think this needs to be a little bit of a smell blood inning. Keep the fire rolling. I know it's early, but. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. Back goes Rosario. On the warning track, he makes the catch. Batting none. The second Here's how the Indians are setting up on D. And today, my spotlight's going to shine down on Cesar Hernandez, second baseman who can really turn the double play. He's got super quick feet, great reaction time. Guys love working with him up the shoot. Jake Lamb standing in now. Left side, but well foul. Bases are empty, one man out. One and one the count to Jake Lamb. And this is low, ball two, two and one. He might still be thrown off from that first inning, guys. He got knocked around pretty good, and that can be hard to recover from mentally sometimes. Pulled toward right center field. Zimmer's in pursuit. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. Up next for the White Sox. Not shortstop. And now here. Tim Anderson. 0 for Anderson. 1 for him here in this one. Ready to deal. Here comes the first pitch. And he takes ball one. one and oh. Two out, nobody on. one and one that was a great hack right there timing was on point just sometimes you have bad bat barrel accuracy and it's two balls in the strike for Tim Anderson to two and two now I know that fastball registered at about 92 93 but I guarantee you it looked about four to five miles an hour faster than that and he dives to make a spectacular catch what a play there to end the inning worth a second look here as this is a beauty to end the inning back with more Monday Night Baseball following this Andres Jimenez is the next to bat as we are all set to begin the third inning in this one. Andres. And now the first pitch. Swing and a miss that time. It's 0 1. The offense better get it going right here because they certainly can tell from their dugout this guy is carrying himself with a presence out on the mound. He's got feel for all his pitches. Behind 0 2 now. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's one and two. Fastball called, strike three, and there's the first out of the inning. So one man gone for Cleveland here in the third. And up next, the San Diego area native Bradley Zimmer. First pitch of the A.B. now. Fouled off. Yeah, he has turned himself into a really nice ball player. I wouldn't put him on the superstar level, but you know what? They didn't miss with this pick either. You go into high rounds and you carve out a career the way this guy has, nice pick. Here it comes, 0-2. And he struck him out as well, so the bottom of the order providing little resistance here, and there are two away. Boy, there's the perfect pitch right there, the straight changeup. He hadn't used it yet in this at bat, and what does he do? He uses it, pulls the string, and gets the big strikeout. In now, Austin Hedges. And he's a bit tardy there on the first pitch fastball. It's nothing in one. Trying to avoid becoming the third strikeout victim of the inning here. Got him to go after that one, and he's in a quick hold, 0-2. 
Boy, this guy's got it going on right now. He's executing everything. He should feel pretty good. He's retired seven in a row. Swing and a miss, and that's out number three. Down in order go the Tribe. Still down three nothing. Now into the box, Adam Eaton. Leading He'll get us going in the home field. half of inning number the three. Right Adam Eaton. And the pitch. Eaton is one of those prototypical left-handed bats that really excels against right-handed pitching. Sees the ball well coming from that side. Liner towards second. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. Boy, this has the makings of being a rough day at the office, yeah, D-Row. A hit already here in the third inning, Come and he's already allowed a few runs. He's right back in trouble again. Yeah, heavy traffic alert, Dan, no doubt about it. That's what you want to do. You want to put the pitcher on the defensive, and early going, the first two innings, they were able to do that. Nothing has changed here to start the third. Johan Moncada will stand in for a second time here as he swings and misses there. It's nothing in one. Eaton on at first, nobody out. There's a line drive base hit to left field. Maddie, that's a surprising pitch right there. I don't now understand after blowing the fastball man. by him. He would speed his bat up with off speed. You. Yeah, redemption after being late right on time with the off speed pitch next. So here's Jose Abreu as he'll go after the first pitch to him and comes up empty. It's strike one. No official at bat for him, but he has scored a run in this one. The 0 1 on its way. Good fastball down around the knees there, taken for a strike. He's attacking this hitter a lot more aggressively than he did the first time when he faced him and issued a walk, coming right after him here. Just a touch outside, one and two. Hey, textbook waste pitch right there. Does he go elevated fastball again or something slow below the zone? A little low, it's two and two. Great game plan so far by this offense. They're not chasing any of those breaking balls out of the zone. Two, two, here it is. And he misses this one inside, and that'll run things full three and two. Wow, this is a pretty good at bat right here from down in the count 0-2. To work the count back to three and two, and he's seen a lot of pitches too. And he misses with it, ball four, so that'll load the bases, and now he's really gonna need to get a ground ball. Yeah, the pitching coach would hate to go to the bullpen this early in the game, but sometimes you have no choice. On the flip side, he might just get in his face a little bit out there, try to challenge him, wake him up from his funk. Either way, we'll see how it works. First offering on its way. Line towards center field. That's in there. Base hit. And they'll extend their lead even further as the run from third is in to score. And the stop sign will smartly go up at third as they hold now the second it. runner Get and they'll again be loaded body. with still nobody out. Run Sometimes the first pitch is the best pitch you'll see all at bat. Definitely coming out of his shoes. Aggressive style. First pitch. Base hit up the middle. And here's the switch hitting catcher Yasmani Grandal as he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. And he's got a shot to open up an even greater lead if he can get something into the outfield. 1 0 count, here it is. On a line, that's a base hit. One run is scored. And the throw's going to hold that second runner over at third, so they'll just plate the one here. That base hit was screaming <laughs> off the bat. Our yeah. show track technology more than confirms it. 111 Garcia. miles an hour was the exit velocity of that line drive. Now here comes the Cleveland skipper up out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And we're going to see a pitching change as that's going to do it for his starter here tonight. So a less than stellar performance here tonight as he makes the early exit and forces that bullpen into action much earlier than anticipated. Cal Quantrill is going to come on to pitch here and in just the third inning you have to think he'll be asked to eat some innings.
to the plate now Leori Garcia as he lines it out to center catch made in center here comes the runner from third and not in time as the run scores. Well that wasn't your standard sack fly hit. It was hit pretty low and hard so it wasn't a given they were going to send it. But they did and they add a number to the run column. Ready now is Andrew Vaughn and their runners at the corners now. Oh, and here's a fastball right down the middle of the plate that swung on and hit out to deep left field. And this one's not coming back. This is a long home run. And good for him. Andrew Vaughn has just launched his first major league home run. Hard to say how many more of these he'll hit in his career, but for now, I'm sure he's happy to say he's got at least one. Well, I think that any kid who's ever dreamed about playing this game dreams exactly this. Watching the ball disappear over the fence, then circling the bases in a big league ballpark. He'll be replaying that at bat over and over in his head. And now his phone's going to blow up. He'll be calling his parents, his buddies. Everybody's going to be talking about this one. Into the box, Jake Lamb. The second baseman. As he'll take Yay. a look at a slider here that misses Lamb. for ball one. Fly down in his first at bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. One and one the count. Still only one out in the inning. Here is a ground ball now for the shortstop to the right of second. And there are two away now. The batter number seven. Shortstop. So now to the plate, Tim Anderson. Anderson. He was robbed of a hit in his last at bat, so he'll try to change his fortunes here. Yeah, you got to control the controllables, Maddie. All you can do is put barrel to baseball and see what happens. You cannot control the defensive wizardry on the other side. Boy, so frustrating as a pitcher. You make a quality pitch on the inside half of the plate right there. Try to bust him in, D-Row, and he fights it off the other way. Yeah, you tip your hat to the pitcher right there. He executed his pitch, but nice job by the offensive player fighting. It doesn't matter what it looks like. A knock's a knock. In now is Adam Eaton. As the first pitch here's a bit high, it's ball one. A hit in two at-bats for him at this point in the ballgame. Line drive to center field. In there, a base hit. He's lucky it's only a single back up the middle and not now a double in the gap Third or a home base. run. Pitches like that in the show get absolutely Ball. hammered. Hold on. Next to bat will be the Cuban import, Yon Moncada. Lifted down the line and left. Rosario is there to put it away and finally put an end to the inning. But it'll come at a cost as six cross the plate, three of them on this three-run home run. We played three full. It's the White Sox nine and the Indians nothing. Digging in will be Cesar Hernandez. He starts off the inning against a guy who struck out the side last inning. How do they get to him here? I'm not sure, Matt, that they want to stay as patient. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. They might want to start swinging a little bit earlier in the count. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Man, this guy has retired a whole slew right now. I think what he needs to do is just stay focused and keep attacking the game plan like he has up to this point because everything he's done has worked. And a strike to even the count. One and one. One of the best ways to keep a guy uncomfortable is to pound him inside. They're doing that, and this one caught the zone. One ball and two strikes to count. Here comes the one-two. It's the top of the zone. He struck him out looking. 
boy, he's really on a roll in the hill right now. now. As we Definitely roll through it again, remember, Harold. he struck out the side in the last inning, and now he picks up right where he left off by striking off the leadoff man here. Let's see if he can keep this going for a little bit. At the plate, Harold Ramirez. As he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. Hey, he's rolling so far in this one as we head in to the middle part of this game. How about 90% of his first pitches have been for strikes? If he continues to do that, he just might finish this one. No runs, just one hit. No errors to this point for the Indians. Boy, and they cannot touch him right now. Five straight strikeouts on the ledger, and there are two away. Pretty impressive back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the inning. What's even more important is now he gets to face the middle of the order without anybody on base for them to drive in. Stepping in now, Jose Ramirez, as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one. First time up, he went down looking. One and zero pitch on the way. Ball two now. You can see this guy's more focused at the plate right now. In that first AB, he went down on strikes. Too high, and it's three and zero. Oh. Now with the base is empty, I think he needs to be careful not to just groove one here just because it's 3-0. He's a guy that could ambush you and lose one over the wall. The 3-1. Popped him up. And he'll get under it to put it away in foul territory, and that ends the inning. Indians go down 1-2-3. They're looking up at a 9-0 deficit. Welcome back to the South Side as we check in with Heidi. Well, Matt, I had a chance to discuss the state of the White Sox offense with their manager in between innings. And he was very pleased with how little they're swinging and missing right now. He said that top to bottom, his guys have impressed him at the plate. He Here loves that they're into double-digit hits, but just as much, baseman. he's thrilled to see Both that they've in. only struck out Up one time. That's impossible to sustain, but it points to the team's incredible focus at the plate right now. All right, Heidi, thank you. A ball and a strike now to Jose Abreu. This is hit high in the air out toward left center, giving chase is Zimmer. He gets there and makes the play for the first out. Up next for the White Sox. Next, it'll be Herman Mercedes. Two base hits, both singles to this point. He's ready. Here's the first pitch. Hit hard on the ground to second, and that is through into center field for a one-out single. You think he's not setting a tone for this series right there? Third knock of the night, and we're only in game one. This could be huge. Run dog. Into the box now, Yosmani Grandal lifted down the line in left. And that'll get down for a base hit. They've gotten their hits in deep counts. They've gotten their hits in early counts. This has been a real onslaught. Yeah, you can look at it one of two ways, Matty. Either they have a ton of respect for the man on the mound, and they are just going to ambush tactics, and it seems to work for them. Or you can look at it the other way. They're just getting lucky. Zach Collins will be summoned now to be the pinch runner. Standing in now, Leori Garcia. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. Hit the ball pretty well in his last at bat, but it resulted in a line out. Swing and a shot toward right center. And this is turning ugly now as this ball's down for extra bases. Scrambling back to third, he's in there. As also on the play, a run comes across to score. 
And they'll get the man at third here at least, but in the interim, a run has come in to score. If we look at the initial angle and the first step quickness, he was off just a bit, and it cost him. That ball's a double because he didn't get off the box quick enough. In now, Andrew Vaughn, as he'll send a ground ball down to third. Throw to first in time, and the big inning is avoided as the side is retired. White Sox pick up just the one. On to the top of inning number five we go. It's the White Sox 10 and the Indians nothing. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Matt, I talked with manager Terry Francona during the break about his thoughts on the Indians hitters to this point. And one thing he mentioned to me was the lack of discipline he's seeing out of their at-bats right now. He said their pitch selection has been the main reason for their struggles today, as far too often they've been swinging at pitches outside the strike zone. That's leading to a lot of soft contact and easy outs. So the focus going forward is on shrinking the zone and forcing the opposing pitching to throw more strikes. All right, Heidi, thank you. Now Billy Hamilton is into the ball game now zero. as he assumes duties Billy. in center field. Hamilton. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Fran Moraes is in no to ball. start one things strike. out as he swings and misses at that one at strike one. This guy's been throwing the ball great so far, but it's going to be tested here. Four, five, and six coming up this part of the lineup. And he rings up another one. Make it nine strikeouts for him in the game. Man, this guy's on his game today, not only when he's throwing strikes, but how about the amount of strikeouts? And what's even more impressive, no walks up to this point. So he's pounding that zone with strikes, and he's making these hitters swing the bat. And it's fouled away. I think a big reason why he's been so effective in this one that he's been just about getting ahead of every hitter. Seems like every one of them are 0-2, 1-2, and, and it's just about every at bat. And when that's the case, your chances of getting a good pitch to hit are way worse. Now to the plate, here is Josh Naylor. Two away in the inning, and Dan, it looks like this could be another 1-2-3 inning for him. Yeah, he has really found a groove on the mound, and it's been impressive to watch. It'll be interesting to see how long he can keep this dominance up. Can't sit back long enough, and the count evens up at one and one. Now here it comes. This pitch is popped up. Moncada in foul ground, and this will not be caught. It's a foul ball. Hey, offense needs to check itself right here. They need to make this starter a little bit more uncomfortable. One strike away from five shutout innings. Another 1 2 delivery. I don't blame the pitcher one bit for trying to get the chase right there. He's been fouling everything off. He's still got a swing and a miss. That retires the side, and that will do it. Down in order go the tribe. Starting to look bleak down 10 nothing. Ready now for the White Sox. Jake Lamb as we move past the halfway point in this one and begin the bottom of the fifth. Now the first pitch. Fouled away. The wind up and the 0 1. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Rosario is there. One down. The bat. The center Here's Billy Hamilton Billy. standing in. First dad bat Hamilton. of the game for him here in the fifth as he was a late entrant into this one. And the pitch. Now some movement in the tribe bullpen as a right hander starts to loosen up. The 1 0. Pulled toward right center field. Waiting on it is Zimmer. Two down. No right fielder. So Number the next 12. to bat will be Adam Eaton. Adam. He's two for three and looking Eaton. for more here. 
now a ball lined toward the gap in left center. Rosario is there and they go down in a hurry here as his side is quickly retired. One two three go the White Sox but they're still in front ten to nothing. In now for Cleveland Andres Jimenez will start things out in their half of the sixth as they look to shake things up here for a lineup that quite frankly has been non-existent to date. Yeah I think if I'm the hitting coach right here Maddie, I'm telling the offense to get aggressive just seems like we've been going too deep in counts and this guy has got exploding stuff on the mound so I would tell them get overly aggressive on a heater in the middle of the plate early and the sixth inning opens with a fly out one away. The center field. And that'll bring in the San Diego product Bradley Zimmer looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. Yeah but it was a good change up Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. Gets the fastball by him here and he's in control 0 and 2. This is one of the things that makes him so effective as a pitcher. Able to pound a zone with all different options. A ball and two strikes. Basic pitching right there. 0 2 fastball up and out of the zone. Change the eye level. Now, time to go to that curveball down and away. Uh, and he's just rolling right now. And even dozen strikeouts for him the in the ballgame. Into the box. Austin Hedges. He went down on strikes in his last at bat. Yeah, and he didn't put up much of a fight either, Maddie. Got to find a way. Can't go down three pitches. I don't care if you're staring at him or swinging at him. You have to find a way to make this pitcher work a little bit harder. That's in there. And he's deep in the hole now, 0 and 2. His command has been outstanding so far, hitting nearly all of his spots, and that's been a big factor. Uh, we'll leave it right there as he strikes out, and that ends the inning. Indians go down 1, 2, 3. Lead looks insurmountable here. They're down 10 nothing. Ready to go for the last half of the inning, and that will bring up the former top prospect as a minor leaguer, Yohan Moncada. First delivery to him. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Rosario is there. One away. So one away, and that will bring in the dangerous Cuban slugger, Jose Abreu. Now here's the pitch. Lays off 1-0. Obviously the game plan wasn't to let this guy beat you right here. He's already walked twice and that pitch out of the zone tells me they want nothing to do with him. That evens it up one and one. And he comes back with a fastball one and two now. One out nobody on. Hit hard on the ground to second, and that finds its way into center for a one out base hit. There's a lot of moving parts in some guys' swings. It usually takes now them a month or so to get it hitter. ironed out. Next will be the designated hitter, Yerman Mercedes, singled in his last at bat. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Abreu stands at first with one out. Now a change up in on the hands that evens it at one and one. And a check swing here as he couldn't help himself and it's ruled strike two. One two. And they're working the outer half here but that one's wide for ball three. Not a bad time right here to put that runner in motion three two count you send the runner and if it's a bad pitch it's ball four. And that one yanked just foul. Runners on first with one down.
Runners on the move for second. Brown ball left side. Skips through and he really has their number now. Four for four in this one. Throw comes in quickly from left so even on the hit and run they'll hold thanks to first and second here. So a long at bat has a positive dividend when all said and done. Yeah absolutely they're not all beauties in box score. He's able to get that ball through the left side for a base hit. Way to grind it out. Into the box Zach Collins as he takes a fastball off the plate for a ball one and all. Oh. He's getting his first plate appearance of the game here in the sixth. And he fouls this one off. Runners are at first and second with one away. Fouled off again, and now he's in a one and two hole. Yeah, you could tell he was ready for another fastball, but the pitcher went to breaking ball, and the hitter just fouls that one off. Here comes the one two. Fouled off. Here he comes again, one, two. Lots of hits given up, but so far, no walks. At least he's making them work to get on base. Problem is, they haven't had to work too hard. Here now, the two, two. And this ball is also hit foul and heading for the seat, so we'll have to do it again. Still two and two. From the belt, the pitch. Line to the right side. But this is going to be a foul ball as that keeps things at two and two. I know the fans love the souvenirs, but the battle between the pitcher and batter right here is what makes the game great. Did well just to make contact there as he spoils off a good changeup. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to go a little bit further outside the zone. Three foul balls in a row. He wants to get a swing and a miss on this next pitch. Full count now. Lined hard toward right center. Boy, and call off the dogs already as this is down for extra bases. The relay. It's a third now, but he's safe as two runs come across to score away from the play. Here's another look at it right here as he drives it right between the two outfielders heading towards the right center field wall. He was flying out of the box, so I think he was thinking triple all the way. By the time they get it back in, he's safely into third. Emmanuel Classe gets the call to pitch here, and he'll try to sort this mess out. He's going to try to at least eat a couple of innings for his guys. At the plate now, Leori Garcia, swing and a liner. Boy, and the shellacking continues as this is down for extra bases. And the runner scores from third as they extend their lead. And he is out trying for two bases, but credit him with a single and an RBI here. At the plate, Andrew Vaughn. Swing and a line drive. Throw cleanly into first, and that ends the inning. So three runs on four base hits, no errors, and no one left. We're through six full. White Sox on top, 13 to nothing. Now back to the top of the lineup, stepping in, Cesar Hernandez. He's one for two in the ball game. Swing and he pops him up. And no one will get this one. Base hit into right center. So only the now second Matt, hit he's given he up tonight. Yeah, Matt, he's no. locked in and pretty dominant no. since the first. So as long as he can get back in that groove with the next batter, he's not going to worry too much about it. Hit in the air down the right field line. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Here's the 0 1. Oh, and a good tight slider there, and he's in command, nothing in two. Although he doesn't use that pitch too much, if he's able to steal some strikes early in the count, could be something they have to think about. The 0 2 once more.
In the dirt here. Good job there as the count goes to one and two. And it's fouled away. You know, taking you inside the mind of a batter right here, you can't get in auto swing mode. You still have to control the strike zone. Eaton will settle under it to make the play for the first out as the runner will have to head back to first. Now batting. Third base. Now it'll be Jose Ramirez. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. And a good fastball there, but this just misses the zone for ball one. Man, this guy's had their number all game long. Up, down, in and out. He's pitching very well. Hernandez leads off first with one away. Two and one to Jose Ramirez. And he comes back with a gorgeous slider there for strike two. And he tries to get him to reach for it, but it stays outside. Three and two. Tried to backdoor him and lock him up with a curveball right there. Pretty good pitch, but he didn't quite get it to come back all the way to the corner. That's tough to do for most guys. And awfully close there on three and two, but take your base, says Earl Hendricks. It's ball four. Fran Moraes stands in as he looks at a called strike. This guy's throwing a gem so far. Biggest key, 80% of his first pitches have been for strikes. Fly ball right down the line in left. Left fielder is on the move. He gets there, and that's the second out. Next up, Eddie Rosario. Two outs and two runners aboard here in the seventh inning. And he lays off there, 1-0. Two down, runners at first and second. Fouled away. On that fastball is too much for him there. One and two. Threw that fastball right by him. He had no chance to get the barrel of that one. Now here's a fly ball. Well hit. Hamilton going back. Still going back. And that one is gone. On a two strike count with two away in the inning. So a three run shot to right center field home run number five on the year but they're going to need a few more here as they're still well behind. Well some people would say this homer is wasted because they're down so big tonight but I'm not one of them. I think anything you can build on and take into the next game is valuable and at least they're still battling. So now to the plate now Josh battle. Naylor as he'll take a look at ball one. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. Up around the letters with that one for ball two. You know, he was really pounding the strike zone early on, but he's kind of gotten away from that here a bit. He might just need a little reminder to attack hitters and trust his stuff. Two and one to the Indians' first baseman. I mean, he had to. I'm going to give him benefit of the doubt and say he was sitting something off speed. Because to be late on a fastball in a count like that is just unforgivable. Two balls and two strikes now. Neither guy willing to give in, and the at bat will continue. Popped him up. And Lamb will put this one away, and that ends the inning. Indians hang a crooked number thanks to this three-run home run. Get up and stretch. Now at the plate, Jake Lamb. He'll start things out here in the bottom of inning number seven. The second baseman, Jake Lamb. He's set and the pitch. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Zimmer is under this one. One pitch, one away. Now batting. Billy Center Hamilton field. digging in now. Billy. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Hamilton. Here's the first pitch to him. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Rosario is there. He hauls it in without any trouble, and there are two away. Now batting. Right fielder. Atta. So two Eaton. away here is the Sox bat in the seventh, and the next to bat is Speedy Adam Eaton. 
ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Line towards center field. So he'll add one to his total as that falls in. He's got three hits in this one. So Yoan Moncada has a chance following that two out base the hit. Third baseman. Dan, he took that right back at his face right there. Exactly what you're trying to do. Middle cut, though. Are you a little concerned? Yeah, that's a case of a ball being right down the middle. As a pitcher, you want to work the corners and stay out of that middle part of the zone, and he paid for it right there with a solid base hit. The relay. The runner from first crosses the plate, and he'll try to get back now, but it's not going to work. The throw hangs him out to dry, and that'll end the inning. Sox get a run here on two hits. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. The White Sox lead this one 14 to 3. Evan Marshall has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. To the plate now. Andres Jimenez lifted into the air out towards center field. And the eighth inning begins with a flyout, quickly one away. With that we'll give you a look at our starter comparison for the two starting pitchers in the game and the column to look at is the one on the right side of your screen. Not too many hits to go around at this point in the ballgame. Next to dig in Bradley Zimmer in his career against this pitcher not a big sample size 0 for 1 strike 1 to start the at bat the 0 1. drive and that's a base hit in the center field. Just a nice clean single right there and I know it's not going to probably make a ton of difference in this game but one thing I love about the competitive fire right there is I don't care what the scoreboard is we do not give away at bats and he certainly didn't right there. Another one fouled off and he's quickly behind 0 and 2. And he fouls this one off. Neither guy giving in here and they'll do it again. Hey have an A.B. right here. I know it's frustrating the heck out of the pitcher. You keep fouling these pitches off maybe one misses over the heart of the plate. Zimmer base runner at first with one out. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Eaton is under it. Two down. And now here is Cesar Hernandez. Two hits and three at bats for him in this one. And he'll try to crowd him there to start the at bat. It's 1 0. Oh. That's to the left and foul. One ball, one strike. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. Two out with the man at first. Fouled off. And it's fouled away. Here's another one, two. And a fastball swung on and missed as they set him down for the second time here tonight. One left for the tribe, and they remain well, well behind. Now here's the cleanup hitter for the White Sox. Jose Abreu. He's singled in two trips to the plate thus far. Jose Abreu. He's set. Here it comes. Now a cutter, but that's in the dirt for a ball. Liner in there for a base hit. That base hit was screaming off the bat, and our show track technology now more than confirms it. 111 miles an hour was the exit velocity of that line drive. Standing in now, Yerman Mercedes down the third baseline. But a foul ball here, 0 and 1. Four hits for him in this one, all singles. Here's the 0 1. Fouled away. A runner at first with no outs here. 
And he got him. Got him with a good high fastball there. Danny, we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations the these days. What makes it so effective? I think, Matt, what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels. That fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter. Do you think you can drive it? But it's really hard to get on top of that good high hard fastball. The 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball that time that misses out of the zone. Good riding action to that thing, and it's ball and two strikes. Runner at first here, one man out. Inside and a hair low. It's two balls and two strikes. Drill down the line. And this gets past him at third as it hugs the line. A fair ball. And he's safe. And this is just a cut fastball. He's trying to sneak in the back door. He's unable to get it done. Leaves it right over the heart of the plate. And that, that's just too easy for a guy like this. He's licking his chops as the ball arrives. And he drills it to the outfield for an extra base hit. Phil Maton comes on to pitch now, hoping for better results than the other arms that they've run out there in this one. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. And he fouls this one off. Oh, and two count. Here's the pitch. Swing and a little blooper to center. Coming in is Zimmer, but he won't get there. It falls in. And this will not be close, and the run will score easily. Every batter is going to get some opportunities with runners in scoring position. The difference with this guy is that he takes advantage of every one of them. That's his seventh RBI of the game. Not too shabby. Stepping in now, Andrew Vaughn. No balls in one strike. Here comes the 0 1. And a check swing here as he couldn't help himself, and it's ruled strike two. He's running. Hit to short. Scooped up. And they tag him out, but this will work as a sort of a sacrifice as the runner moves up. So now into the box is Jake Lamb, runner in scoring position with Sugan. Lamb. Now the first pitch. Got to believe you're going to get some tough pitches in this count with the base open at first. This is where you have to regroup and find a way to get a good pitch to drive in that run. Waved at and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance at hitting that one, and the inning is over. So it's two runs on three hits, no errors, and a runner left on. We played eight full, and the White Sox are out in front, 16 to three. Cody Hoyer comes on from the pen hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Striding forward now is the D.H. Harold Ramirez starting things for his side in the ninth as they face the improbable odds of trying to come back in this one. Yeah not a lot of hope for them at this point. These guys know these bats still count at least for their own stats you can't mill in your chances as a professional Hoyer offers up perhaps one of the nastiest sliders around and it won't be uncommon to see a lot of off balance swings against it and it'll be easy to see why once you see it come out of his hand he's got a huge break on it and a swing and a miss good pitch there for the first out here in the ninth next here is Jose Ramirez over oh, two for him to this point. Here's the first pitch to him. Ground ball right side straight into the shift. And he'll reach first as they can't make the play on him. Into the box, Fran Reyes as he'll watch a slider that runs out of the strike zone away for ball one. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. Can't get around quick enough and that'll move the count to 1 and 1. You can definitely tell with that foul off right there that he's picking up spin on this pitcher's off speed stuff. 
Maybe expect a fastball on this next one. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. It's been a rough game for him at the plate. Couldn't get the bat off his shoulder right there, and he struck out twice before that one. So he's going to have a lot to think about when he leaves the ballpark tonight. Into the box now, Eddie Rosario. As he'll take a look at a high strike here on the outside corner, it's 0-1. Right side, but it's well foul. And this crowd wasn't all that big, but they've stuck around to the final out. Swung on, but fouled off to the left. Ramirez, the runner at first with two gone. Another one sent foul. Last strike now for Cleveland. Fouled off. Has them down to their final strike. Here it comes. Hey, five foul balls in a row. Loving the battle in the box right here, making the pitcher work. Count moves to a ball and two strikes now. Here comes the one two. And it's fouled away. Making him work out there. The ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. And he'll get to see another one. It'll be the tenth pitch of this at bat. Fouled away. Okay, somebody's got to figure it out. Either the pitcher make a nasty pitch, or this hitter's got to put something in play because the guys up in the booth are getting tired. We're going to need a cup of coffee after this A.B. Now another 1-2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. Well, that wasn't exactly a nail-biter, but it's always nice when you can get an offensive explosion like that and save your closer for another day. A comfortable victory. 16 to 3 tonight. The Chicago White Sox hosted a three run first to propel them to the win. Lucas Giolito earns the win his second as he struck out 13 in this one. Tristan McKenzie was slapped with eight earned runs as he takes the loss. So that will wrap things up for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Wachney, and our whole crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, head to theshow.com. Four hours exactly. Thank you for joining us here tonight. And we remind you to please drive home safely.